foreign body ingestion and food bolus. When going to see a patient with a foreign body ingestion or food bolus, you will need a headlight, tongue depressor, scope, lubricating jelly and chlorhexidine wipes, and blue spray. When taking a history from a patient that has ingested a foreign body or has a food bolus, key factors are type, number, location and time since ingestion of the ingested foreign body. Most patients or their families will know what was ingested. Most common symptoms, foreign body sensation and dysphagia, developed minutes to hours after ingestion. Patients are likely to show where they feel the foreign body in the upper esophagus, but lower esophageal impactions can present as a vague discomfort, ache or chest pain. Check for hypersalivation, retrosternal fullness, regurgitation, gagging, choking, hiccups and retching. Red flags to look out for are patients with severe neck or chest pain and tachycardia, tachypnea or surgical emphysema indicating an actual or impending esophageal perforation, regardless of whether a soft or hard foreign body is suspected. Patients with multiple previous episodes of dysphagia or food bolus obstruction. Patients with button battery ingestion. Your initial examination should focus on the airway patency, vital signs, patient's ability to handle secretions and looking for signs of complications such as hematemesis, abnormal breath sounds, tenderness in neck, chest or abdomen or subcutaneous air. Get a lateral and posterior anterior neck and chest x-rays. It can help in not only determining the location but the type of object as well. Examine the oropharynx. The tonsils and base of tongue are common sites for fish bones to become lodged. Examine the neck. Check for swelling, erythema or crepitus, suggesting esophageal perforation. Chest examination may reveal evidence of inspiratory noise stridor, suggesting lodged esophageal foreign body with tracheal compression. Abdominal examination may demonstrate small bowel obstruction or perforation. Speak to the general surgeons in that case. F&E is vital to examine the pharynx and larynx for foreign bodies. It's important to note that fish bones can be lodged in the piriform fossa. In case of airway compromise or impending or actual esophageal perforation or ingestion of a button battery, alert the registrar and anaesthetic team immediately. In the case of food bolus, try fizzy drinks to try and relax the lower esophageal sphincter muscles. If the foreign body or food bolus is in the upper esophagus, the patient is usually admitted under ENT. If it is in the lower esophagus, gastroenterology and or general surgery. In case of a hard foreign body or bone, the patient will need an urgent rigid esophagoscopy. If it is a soft food bolus, it will need to be done within 12 to 24 hours of ingestion. You will need an emergency esophagoscopy for patients with a foreign body that is sharp, longer than 5 cm or superabsorbent polymer, for patients with lithium or button batteries and patients with signs of airway compromise. Then an urgent esophagoscopy for patients with evidence of near complete or complete esophageal obstruction with patients with esophageal food bolus without complete obstruction patients with esophageal foreign bodies that are not sharp or sharp pointed objects that are in stomach or duodenum, magnets that are within endoscopic reach for patients with objects that are longer than six centimeters in length or above the proximal duodenum and for patients with coins in esophagus. Then non-urgent esophagoscopy for patients with objects in the stomach that are greater than 2.5 centimeters in diameter with, for patients with disc battery in stomach um, that can wait for up to 48 hours and for patients with blunt objects that fail to pass stomach in three to four weeks. Patients with esophageal injuries from button batteries will need short and long-term follow-ups to look for complications related to erosion or perforation and esophageal stricture. Most patients, especially ones with multiple episodes of food bolus, should be investigated for underlying causes.